Dan Walling with CodeWithDan.com and welcome to this next edition of the video newsletter where all the great stuff I find out there, articles, blogs, videos, code, and more gets consolidated in an effort to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest trends and technologies. So let's jump right in to the first item that I have for you. I came across a nice series on API authentication with Node.js that goes into some of the fundamentals such as encryption and JWTs has multiple phases, as you can see here, and covers OAuth and Google and Facebook integration, and even does the authentication and validation on the server side. So definitely something to check out if you're interested in learning more about, for instance, Passport.js and how that module can be integrated into your apps and other options that are available. Next item I wanted to cover isn't actually new. I saw it a while back, but I've had a lot of people ask me lately about doing end-to-end -end testing and browser automation. Now, there's a lot of options out there. For instance, I know in the Angular crowd, we like to use Protractor, but there are others as well, and this is one of them. It's called Nightwatch.js, and they provide what looks to be a very simple way to perform these end-to-end -end automation type tests. They'll basically wrap some Selenium functionality, it looks like, have a built-in test runner, and a lot of other great features that you can see here. So definitely something to check out if you are working with end-to-end -end testing and try to automate that process more. Another project I stumbled across recently is called Express Gateway, and this is something for Node.js and Express, of course, and it's designed to be for microservices. So it provides an API gateway, orchestration, and really a quick way to get up and running when it comes to microservices running with Node.js and orchestrating others that might be running elsewhere. So this is a relatively new project, but they have a lot of great features. If we run over to the GitHub site, you can get to all the code, of course, but they walk you through some of the fundamentals here that they offer and how to create gateways. It looks like they have a CLI, an actual built-in REST API, plugins, data stores, and more. So if you're working with microservices and also have Node.js as kind of the entry point to that, definitely something you might want to explore. What I like about it as well is they have some documentation that's actually pretty decent so far. Now, I haven't had a chance to actually dive in deep to this, but it looks interesting. That's why I decided to put it in the newsletter here. D3 has been around for quite a while and provides amazing ways to render graphs and other types of data in some pretty remarkable formats if you haven't seen it before. Here's an example of just something I clicked on here that you can do with D3 that may be not super useful for your purposes, but there's a lot of stuff in here that is useful, whether it's charting or showing big data or whatever it may be. Well, learning D3 can be fairly involved, depending on what you're doing, of course. There's a lot of wrapper components and things like that out there. But I came across a online book called D3 In Depth that you might want to check out if you are interested in working with D3 more. And what I liked about it is it provides a lot of walkthroughs of how to get started with things. So at the beginning of the shapes chapter, looks like we're going to be looking at curves and pie segments and symbols talks a little bit about SVG and how that works, and then goes into details about how to do some of the more simple things, like how do we render lines using D3. So if you're interested in rendering a lot of different types of graphics, again, whether it's business charts or other types of data, then check out d3indepth.com. Next item I wanted to highlight is actually on my blog, and it's something I put together because I had a lot of people asking me about where to get started with ES2015 or TypeScript or Angular type code. So I list 10 different projects, starting from the basics of just language syntax for ES2015. Here's a module example, for instance, and these all have projects and code you can get to on GitHub. Here's one for TypeScript that has a lot of different ways you can use TypeScript and some of the syntax, and then from there, the rest are Angular and TypeScript projects. So I range from a Hello World to I have kind of a bare bones one that adds a little bit more to a little more complex ones on forms. Here's a Jumpstart one. This is actually what we use in our Angular on-site training classes we do for companies. So we actually build this app throughout the class. And there's even more. If you want to integrate with databases, use Docker and more. So check that one out if you're interested in ES2015, TypeScript, or Angular code. 
The final item I wanted to mention in this edition of the newsletter is called Shoelace. And they had kind of a clever slogan here. It says a back to the basic CSS starter kit for when you don't need the whole boot. Now, I am a big fan of Bootstrap and use that CSS a lot, but I will admit there's plenty of cases where I don't need quite everything it offers. So this provides a really simple CSS starting baseline, and it's very easy to get started with from what I've seen here. You can do some overrides of what they provide. They do have some documentation. And if I scroll on down here, they'll actually have some examples of how you can work with headings and paragraphs and lists. And it's very clean, I thought. So there's a lot of these out there, as I mentioned, but I'm always on the lookout for other ones when I have a project that maybe doesn't need everything that Bootstrap or Pure or Foundation offers. So something to explore if you're looking into CSS at all. Well, thanks again for tuning in to this edition of the Code with Dan web development newsletter. I hope you found a few things useful. I have a lot more coming down the pipeline that's planned. So until then, have fun in all things web development.